Hello, and thank you for joining us for another edition of Harvest. I'm Valerie Lowe alongside Chuck, Stefan, and Pete. You guys, it's the day before Good Friday. I want you to know this is my favorite holiday, holy day of the year. You know, uh, Pete, I was thinking about your dad. This must mm -hmm. have been a very busy time of the year or really important time. It was a very important time of the mm -hmm. year for my dad in the church. And uh, Good Friday was always a... A noontime service, uh, not an evening service, and uh, uh, we would get together as a family on on uh, on Saturday, mm -hmm. and then uh, on Easter Sunday there was always uh, a sunrise service that was mandatory attendance, followed mm -hmm. by a uh, church-wide uh, breakfast uh, in, in one of our <laughs> facilities, and uh, then a big service, and then a big celebration that evening too. Yeah, one of my colleagues told me that at years gone by that they would get off. Um, I guess leave work at about noon. Dr. Mm -hmm. Summerall allowed mm -hmm. people to leave at mm -hmm. noon because he knew that the church, he was going to have a church Well, service. it was mandatory attendance. You know, if, you, if you were, were, <laughs> were going to if you were gonna take off Friday afternoon, you had, you to, had to go, go to Christian to Center. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Now, there, there, was a, there was a little hitch there. So, uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I get it. Hey, Chuck, I mean, I saw this really interesting story that kind of hits home. Donna Stowe, our recept the receptionist here at Lucy Broadcasting, her granddaughter has, you know, I guess been, she's been blessed by the Pope. And I'm sorry you haven't, but maybe, maybe that will happen. In well, the at, at some point, <laughs> maybe I'll be able to get over to Rome. But uh, Donna's family is yeah. in Rome right now for the Holy Week mm -hmm. festivities. And they were not able to get into one of the, um, to the private audiences inside the Basilica, but they had group tickets to an area right by where the Pope was driving his Pope mobile yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you saw this on the network news last night or not, but uh, the Pope invited a couple of kids onto his Pope mobile, and then he's driving by, and this is Donna's granddaughter getting <laughs> kissed and blessed, blessed by the Pope right there outside St. <laughs> Peter's Basilica. And, of course, uh, the poor little baby is uh, too she, young to know any better what, or to, to know on. what's going on, but what a thrill for the parents. Uh, to have their daughter held and kissed by the Pope. And, uh, it's, uh, you know, if he were a presidential candidate, we'd mm -hmm. kind of joke about him kissing babies and shaking hands mm -hmm. and doing all the kinds <laughs> of things that candidates do to deflect attention. But it, it's nice to see the Pope being out and being um, a person of the people. And mm -hmm. uh, here you see uh, yesterday... He invites these two boys. Hey, let's go for a ride. Along. Let's get on the Pope Mobile. And, and they're looking at the assistant like, really? Can we do this? I don't think you'll get a chance to do that either, uh, Chuck. I'm sorry. He, uh, he... I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be yeah. invited up onto the Pope Mobile. So come was... on, guys. He's not even running for re-election. No, <laughs> you know, no, he doesn't have to. Uh, no, he really. doesn't, no, he doesn't have to. You know? he, he's got all the votes he yeah, needs one right. time. Yeah. And... Uh, what, what a thrill for those guys, know, too. Right? And, you know, speaking of uh, the Pope and the Catholic Church, there's a response um, by bishops in the Catholic Church to this broad bill that um, lawmakers are considering in Colorado. Well, it's a, it's a terrible bill that they're yes. considering, but the problem is the bill looks like it possibly could pass, given the atmosphere of Colorado mm -hmm. right now. And it's a bill that would basically take away all kinds of restrictions for abortions, including... Uh, the need for parental consent yes. for underage abortions. Mm -hmm. And given the current political climate in Colorado, the state that has given you pot and uh, all kinds of different things that have been legalized, it, it looks like there's a possibility this bill could pass. Okay, so the bill wouldn't affect any laws, current laws, but moving forward, is that... Is that the case? Well, oh, well, yeah, it would it affect, would affect current, current laws. Because currently, um, you know, kids have to have... Kids, girls have to get their parents' permission to get an abortion as of April 1st, 2014. But if this bill passes, then, and it's a broad bill. It says anything pertaining to um, a woman's reproductive rights. Yeah. Um, I think one of the odd things that I saw in it was that uh, any pro-life legislation that's going to be legislated in the future would be null and void. It, it pre right. prevents any future laws, which... From any, I mean, from a rational standpoint, how can today's legislature mm -hmm. prohibit any future legislature from mm -hmm. crafting legislation? So, in the future, for instance, in the future, if they wanted to pass a law that says 
the same law that's required in Today. Texas that you have to have an ultrasound and listen to the baby's heartbeat before you can have an abortion. They couldn't pass such a law th during that time. I mean, if there's a good passes. reason why people in the north of uh, Colorado and the south of Colorado don't agree with the center of Colorado. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, that's where the majority of the uh, uh, people live, the population live. And the center of Colorado is a very liberal area. And uh, it's unfortunate. You go down to the Colorado Springs or you go north up toward Wyoming, and uh, the people there absolutely do not agree with what's going on uh, with the legislature and, and especially the governor. And I'd like the comment that you sent to us about this is the state that legalized marijuana, mm -hmm. and it was right. another comment that you made well, about... Well, they, they uh, uh, have some of the most strict gun control laws in, in the nation, and mm -hmm. several manufacturers of uh, both uh, accessories for guns as well as guns themselves have, have decided we're moving out of the state because we can't sell our product that we make here. And there's a lot of states who are competing for that business. They, mm -hmm. they want uh, those kind of manufacturers who are, who are legal. They're not producing anything illegal, except in Colorado. And so uh, they've decided to move and, mm -hmm. uh, and leave the state. Well, switching gears a little bit, we're almost close to our goal of, uh, you know, sending out 14,000 mm -hmm. Bibles. I think we're like 80... 700 or 8,500 Bibles yeah, so far? Something like that. I haven't looked at the, at the numbers today, but now we're getting close. So we do need help to be able to send out the rest of these 14,000 Bibles. We need to hear from you, 1-800-365-3732 or go to lacy.com and uh, help us go over the mark. We'll look mm -hmm. forward to it. Well, you know, we're talking about, you know, Holy Week and this being Easter uh, season, and people need to hear that message. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that, yeah. Wow. So that we're doing pretty good, but we want to reach that goal. Mm -hmm. of For those of 000. you who might be listening on shortwave, 97 eight, it's almost <laughs> 9700. I realize that we're a TV show, but sometimes I am able to listen to us on uh, Harvest 103.1 WHME in South Bend. And your look at that <laughs> and I'm saying, would have wow. sent me driving off the road right now. So, okay. so 9,700 is the number on the Bibles. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Chuck Freeby. I could always count on this quintessential, the, the ultimate prof, um, professional journalist. Thank you so much. Still to come, she's a marriage and family therapist and the mother of five. Megan Breedlove explains how to find abundance in the messiness of motherhood. And best-selling author Pat Simmons uses her flair for fiction to share the gospel. She joins us today with a new Christian romance novel and grab your Bibles and turn to the book of Romans. Pastor Mark Lance continues with part four of The Power of the Resurrection. Stay with us. The International News is next. On this Thursday, April 17, 2014, here's what's happening in your world. Three pro-Russian militia members died, 13 were wounded when Ukrainian troops repelled an attack on a National Guard base in a black seaport called Mariupol. A crowd of around 300 men armed with stun grenades and Molotov cocktails attacked the base in the southeast part of the country. Servicemen inside fired warning shots, but the attackers did not stop the assault and the Army had to respond. There were no casualties among the Ukrainian servicemen. 63 of the attackers were detained, with tens of thousands of Russian troops deployed along the border with Ukraine. There are fears the Kremlin might use the instability in the predominantly Russian-speaking region as a pretext for seizing more territory beyond its annexation of Crimea last month. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov arrived in Geneva this morning to attend a crucial foreign minister's meeting on the crisis between Ukraine and Russia. Meanwhile, Secretary of State John Kerry met with Ukraine's foreign minister ahead of the meeting. Ukraine is hoping to placate Russia and calm hostilities with its neighbor, even as the U.S. prepares a new round of sanctions, punishing Moscow for what it regards as fermenting unrest. Activists from a Ukrainian feminist group attempted to protest outside where the talks were being held. They were swiftly arrested by police. South Korea's president visited the scene of the ferry wreck today as the search continues for hundreds of missing passengers. Park Jun hai was taken out on a Coast Guard vessel and looked on as search boats worked around the sunken ferry. 287 people are still missing after this ferry flipped onto its side and sank in cold waters off the southern coast of South Korea Wednesday. Strong currents, rain, and bad visibility have hampered an increasingly anxious search 
as it becomes clear passengers were not given the order to evacuate the ship until 30 minutes after it began to list. The captain earlier said he was ashamed and deeply sorry. In the Middle East, Ramallah, a bustling center of Palestinian life, is just a 20-minute drive from Jerusalem. But for Israelis, it might as well be on the other side of the world. Since a major round of Israeli-Palestinian fighting more than a decade ago, Israelis have been kept out of Palestinian cities by the Israeli military and by their own fears. A few have begun trickling back in, tours led by Palestinian guides and guarded by plainclothes Palestinian security agents. On Wednesday, about two dozen visitors, Israelis and a few foreigners, visited Ramallah as part of an ongoing peace initiative. The only way that we're going to break forth through any progress in making peace between the people who live here is to break down the walls and get to people to see each other, to talk to each other, to reach out, to understand the reality that each side is living in. The reason I come on these trips is I'm very curious, as an Israeli, what's happening 15, 20 minutes away from me. Palestinian cities that we normally can't get to visit. While some Palestinians, especially shopkeepers, would welcome large numbers of Israeli visitors to their towns, others dismiss the possibility of normalizing relations. And while in Israel they are celebrating Passover, the Christian world's Holy Week celebrations are starting up. Devout Catholics in the Philippines began their Holy Week penitence today, whipping themselves as they ask God to forgive their sins. Male residents in Manila, shirtless and with their heads covered, walk past the Stations of the Cross while self-flagellating with chain-tipped whips that draw blood. As part of their ritual, they also prayed kneeling with arms outstretched and lay on their bellies while others hit them on the back with wooden paddles. Many of the participants in the event have been doing it for over 30 years. They say they pray for repentance and blessings for their families. Still to come, best-selling author Pat Simmons uses her flair for fiction to share the gospel. And up next, marriage and family therapist Megan Breedlove explains how to find abundance in the messiness of motherhood. It's all coming up next here on Harvest. Dr. Lester Summerall said that faith comes not by prayer, but by continually feeding on God's Word. Paul the Apostle wrote that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Lacey Broadcasting's Partner in Faith make it possible for millions to hear the Word of God in over 190 countries, whether by television, shortwave radio, free Bible distribution, a 24-hour daily prayer line, souls hear the gospel, Will you join our fellowship of partners in faith? With every soul you reach for Jesus Christ, you're laying up treasure in heaven. We need your help to reach the lost for Jesus Christ. You can be a partner in faith for as little as a monthly gift of $25. Call 1-800-365-3732 and tell the prayer operator you want to be a partner in faith. Call today, 1-800-365-3732. Be better prepared to fight off colds and viruses with Making Healthy Choices Super Immune Pack. This immune-enhancing pack includes Maximum Immunity Guard and Beta Glucan Plus, two great products containing an organic blend of mushrooms and astragalus root for immune defense, mineral concentrate with selenium and zinc to increase immune resistance, and eucalyptus oil to help revitalize the respiratory tract. Call now and this package can be yours for only $45.95 and for a limited time, shipping is free. Call 800-965-2345 or visit mhclife.com. We know that having a Bible changes people's lives. That's why Lassie Broadcasting created our Spread the Word ministry 14 years ago to provide anyone outside the U.S. who requests one a free Bible. Today, your gift of $180 sends an entire case of Bibles. So please give us a call today and help spread the word. Call 1-800-365-3732 and help us send 36 Bibles around the world. Many moms get caught up in believing that motherhood is a burden, that it has nothing to do with the abundant life. But author Megan Breedlove believes that God uses motherhood to give us abundant life. She joins us today with her new um, project, Chaotic Joy. Welcome to the Harvest Show, Megan. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Okay, so before the uh, show started, we were just talking about motherhood, and Stefan has just been quiet the whole time, I feel like. <laughs> 
we're torturing him. He has children, but he's not the mom. Obviously, he's the dad. Sure. It's totally, I mean, there's a big difference between the moms and dads, that's for sure. So, Megan, I have to start off by asking you, why did you title this book Chaotic Joy? Because I believe those are those two words are contradictory. <laughs> they are, but a lot about motherhood is contradictory. There's You're a lot right. of chaos. Sometimes being a mom is just plain crazy, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of joy in it, even while the craziness is going on. So you're a mother of five. Which, yes. uh, what's the age group for your kids? My oldest is 11, and my youngest just turned two. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, you know, we were talking about you arriving here at the station today, and I told the producer, oh, she's probably on the phone giving last-minute instructions <laughs> on what to do. Don't hit your brother. Be quiet. Do this. You say that we can find abundance in the messiness of yes. motherhood. Yes. Kind of describe that. What do you mean by messiness? Well, motherhood doesn't always go the way we think it's going right. to go. It's not always as simple and easy and clear-cut as we think it's going to be. It's a mess sometimes. Kids don't always react the way we think we're gonna, they're going to react. They don't always do what we expect them to do. And not to mention that, but the house is just plain sometimes a mess. Mm -hmm. Now, Megan, you've got a, a master's in counseling. Yes. You've done a lot of research and reading on motherhood and parenthood yes. prior to you know, becoming a mom. What were some of the things that, that surprised you? Uh, with the actualities of, of motherhood, especially with five kids? Well, the first thing that surprised me was, as you said, I had read a lot, I had researched a lot in preparation for my degree and in preparation once I found out I was pregnant. And I still remember bringing our daughter home in that little infant carrier, setting her down in the house, looking at her and thinking, now what do I do with her? <laughs> right? And one thing that surprised me was not knowing exactly what to do. I know that I want to raise a child who loves God and follows him. Does that mean she goes to bed at 8.30 or 9? Right. It's not always as clear cut. I didn't have all the answers I thought I was going to have. Yeah. Okay, so at what point did you come to a crossroads? Or I mean, you still have a ways to go. So. Yes. Um, how do you not just kind of lose it all? I remember looking into the mirror, crying, telling God, sure. this is a thankless job. And he mm -hmm. said two words to me that kind of changed, revolutionized my parenting. He said to me, thank you. And then I knew then that what I was doing as a parent was unto the Lord, not necessarily mm -hmm. just meeting the demands of motherhood, but we all kind of come to that right. revelation at one point or another, don't we? Right, we do. And I remember a time when I felt very sorry for myself. I had two kids. My oldest was two. My youngest was about six months. And I remember thinking, you know, nobody cares. Nobody cares about what I do. Mm -hmm. Nobody's thankful. And God broke into my spirit and he said, you know, I care. My son said that which you do for the least of these you do for me. And if that's true, and we know that it is because Jesus said it, if that's true, then what we do matters immensely. It matters a whole lot. Even the things that we think nobody sees, God sees, Jesus sees, and he takes them personally. Mm -hmm. how, did, uh, how did your relationship with the Lord change after having children? In just broad terms, how, did, how does our relationship with the Lord change? after the introduction of kids? Well, for one thing, I think we pray a lot more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know that I've prayed more since having kids, I think, than in the rest of my life put together. But I think another way it changes, we begin to understand more of the fatherhood of God. Mm -hmm. Before we have kids, we know that God is a father, but we don't understand exactly what that means because we don't have children of our own. Yeah. But then afterwards, we can begin to understand that parent-child relationship. Even if we're moms, we can understand that parent-child dynamic mm -hmm. that's going on. And we can learn a lot more about how God loves us, how incredibly much he loves us. Mm -hmm. Well, you talked about prayer and seizing the moment. Explain yes. that. Yes. I used to, before I had kids, I would come home from work. I would have my quiet time. I would take about an hour to read my Bible and pray and do a Bible study. I remember those yeah. days. Yeah. 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 And I remember <laughs> thinking that if I would just try hard enough after I had kids, then mm -hmm. I'd be able to make that same system keep working for mm -hmm. me. And I found that out within the first day after I had children, that that wasn't necessarily going to happen. I'm not always going to have a solid hour per day to sit down and have my quiet time. Mm -hmm. So what I have to learn to do is to hear God speaking throughout the day instead of trying to confine him to one hour slot at a certain time of day. I have to learn and hear him speaking throughout the day mm -hmm. and when he gives me the time instead of just thinking, oh, it's got to all happen right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Chaotic Joy, you talk about four, four kind of ways that the Lord speaks or that we can hear his voice. Uh, what, what are those? Right. Well, the first one is we can hear his voice in the daily things. Mm -hmm. Jesus spoke when he walked this earth to, 
and to his listeners in things like harvests and seeds and sheep. And mm -hmm. he doesn't talk to me in those things because I don't really understand much about those. Yeah. But he yeah. can talk to us through things like bath time and mm -hmm. carpools and even fixing meals. Those are the normal, ordinary, everyday things in our mm -hmm. lives. And he can talk to us through those. Mm -hmm. Those are not things that we have to get out of the way in order to hear his voice. Okay, okay. so that, that's so interesting that you would say that because I think those are the very things we tend to as mothers not to go to the Lord in prayer. Right. We don't seek him about the meals or bath time or anything right. like that. We want to do all the big picture stuff with God when he's in the details. Right. He very much is in the details and he wants to use the details of our calling to speak to us, to communicate his truth to us. That's mm -hmm. exactly how he's going to do it. If we're waiting for a solid hour and only listening to him, then we're going to be left out a lot of times because we're not going to have that solid hour mm -hmm. every day. But if we can hear him speaking through the normal everyday details of our calling, we'll hear him all the time. Mm -hmm. What are some of the other principles that you talk about in chaotic joy? That we can hear him all the time is the main principle mm -hmm. and that no matter what is going on, no matter what our circumstances, whether or not those circumstances are perfect, we can still have deep and abundant joy because we can know God all the time, even when circumstances are not perfect. Mm -hmm. In your uh, experience, uh, have you learned how to like, kind of let God take control of certain things uh, since becoming a mom that you know, <laughs> certain things are outside of our That's ability right. to control and right. to uh, direct and right. it's a trust, uh, it's, a, it's a step in, in, of, of new trust in, in, in him, isn't it? It is because we want so very badly to get the job right. We want to do a good yeah. job and we want to raise our children properly and give them perhaps even what we never had. And we have to learn that God loves our children even more than we do. He's looking out for them even right. more than we are. And with every mom on this planet, no matter how wonderful a mom she may be, God has to make up the difference between our imperfection as humans and his perfection as almighty God. So he has to step in and fill in the gap mm -hmm. in what we'd like to be able to be for our children and what he can be for our children. Mm -hmm. You know, for the mother who's struggling, who says, you know, I, I'm trying to do this right. I, right. I'm beyond trying to be perfect. I just want to get through the day. What encouragement would you offer her? The first thing I would say is that it's okay not to be perfect. There was only one perfect person who ever walked this earth, and that was Jesus Christ. We can't possibly have enough wisdom to never make a mistake, to never do anything wrong. Mm -hmm. Besides that, we're sinful human beings. We sin sometimes in addition to just making mistakes. And while it's not okay to sin, God understands and has provided a way through Christ for us to be forgiven mm -hmm. for that. We don't have to be perfect in order to do a good job by our children. Yeah. Uh, what would you say to, to a, a mom or a dad mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. feeling, you know, maybe a bit guilty uh, in the way that they've run the house or seen, you know, uh, raised the children and maybe they're a little bit on in years, whatnot. Uh, what would you say to that person? I would suggest that they take that before God and mm -hmm. ask them if there really is any guilt there. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times both mom and dads have false guilt. We have guilt for not being, quote, perfect. And that's false guilt because we can't be perfect. Mm -hmm. If there is any guilt over anything we truly have done that was wrong or that was sinful, then God will point that out to us. And then we yeah. can repent and we can make amends where necessary. But that would be the first thing, to take it before him, see what we really do need to feel guilty over, mm -hmm. and then proceed from there. Mm -hmm. And God is on the side of the parent, isn't yes. he? Yes, he is. He was a parent himself. He knows. Oh, that's such a good point. <laughs> we don't think of God. I mean, yes. we yeah, know. When, when you, your little story there, I wouldn't know. You said, God is a thankless God. Yeah. I, I thought what you were going to say was he said, well, you don't tell me about it. You know? <laughs> right. No, no, no. He said thank you. So I was encouraged to continue on to, you know, to be the best mom that I could be. But that's such right. a good point that God was a parent, too. Yes. He still is a parent. Yes, I mean, he And he understands. Thank you so much. Now, Megan, you're going to join us again tomorrow yes. with some principles from Chaotic Joy. And to connect with Megan, go to manifamoms.com or you can go to harvest-tv.com for a link to her new project, Chaotic Joy and Still to Come. Grab your Bibles and turn to the book of Romans. Pastor Mark Lance continues with part four of The Power of the Resurrection. But next, Brian Bush joins us from the top of Jerusalem with moments from the Holy Land. Hello, everyone. Brian Bush. Can you hear the bells? <laughs> it's wonderful, isn't it? I'm in the old city. Those are the bells from the Tower of St. Saviors here in the old city and of course we know before the glory of Easter 
There was much suffering that Jesus had to endure. And in these moments of Jerusalem, we're focusing in in our Lenten period uh, on, on some of these points where our, the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ played out. And today we're talking about the Via Della Rosa. It's also called the Way of Sorrows. And I can share with you, that's sometimes how I've described my life. I don't know about you, but it's, it's a fact that our lives are going to have sufferings, are, are going to have uncomfortable periods. And we got to remember that God wants us to live our lives. He wants us to live our lives in a surety and in security of our faith. Um, life is worth living. He doesn't want us to be weighed down in self-pity or to be a martyr, you know. Um, he's given us life to live to the full and in abundance of faith, love, joy, and hope. Friends, Jesus' way of sorrows that he endured was done out of love, out of the hope that was laid before him, the scriptures say. When we're facing hard times, we have to keep focused that life is worth living, that life with God is the ultimate step, and the suffering that we're enduring is worth it because we're being shaped, molded, and matured into a stronger faith. In fact, these stations of sorrow may otherwise be called stations of strength. They're opportunities for us to sharpen our sword, if you will, and to become stronger in our faith. Nothing is random in God's design. I want to encourage you that by faith, we have the assurance that even if the situation is terrible, God is at work making us into his likeness. And the reality is that this side of heaven will include suffering to redeem us and ultimately bring us to a place of unspeakable joy, peace, and love. That's what Jesus was focused on when he walked up the way of sorrows with his cross. And we can focus on that too. It's an amazing love story. And if you don't know the entirety of what I'm speaking about, again, at this time before Easter, pray, seek God, get into his word, and if you need to give us a call, please do at Prayer Line. We would love to hear from you. Thank you for joining me on our Moments from the Holy Land. Be with me again tomorrow as we will wrap up our two-week series uh, focused on pre-Easter, the Lenten period, and the places here in the Holy Land. Thank you so much for joining me. Many Christian ministries have desired to bring the gospel of Jesus to Israel, to proclaim his message of God's love to the villages and streets he walked while on this earth. Yet only one Christian network has been broadcasting the message of God's love to Israel for more than 10 years. By God's grace, Lassie Broadcasting has been bringing the gospel of Jesus Christ and the voices of many American ministries to every home in Israel via Middle East television. You can help this great work by becoming a partner in faith for as little as $25 a month. Call today. Would you like to have a secure source of income for the rest of your life? 
What if that income was set and would never change no matter what the economy does? And at the same time, what if you knew you were changing lives for Jesus? That's right, it's a charitable gift annuity, the amazing part investment, part gift that never stops giving. The rates are much higher than savings accounts or certificates of deposit. It's the perfect way to honor God with your finances and fulfill the Great Commission. If you are over 49 and a half years old and you have at least $10,000, you may qualify. Call us at 1-866-224-2087 or go online to giftplanningatlasc.com. This hard to believe opportunity may not always be available, so call now while the rates of return are still high. Do it today, won't you? Pat Simmons is an award-winning, best-selling novelist with 20 years' experience in the news industry as a writer for television, radio, and print media. Best known for her novellas and Christian romance works, Pat is a strong advocate for the ministry of Christian fiction and how it can impact society. Good to have you with us today. Thank you so much for the invitation. I, I want to kind of start off on the topic of, of fiction, Christian <laughs> fiction, and then Christian romance fiction, okay. which there was okay. a new one on me. Okay. Uh, but uh, just... Before we came out to our friends here that are watching, you're mentioning that uh, that Christian fiction is the the number two genre selling genre uh, in publications. Period. Mm -hmm. Behind romance, yeah. romance is number one, mm -hmm. and Christian fiction is number two. And I think a lot of people just want to read something to reinforce their beliefs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I know for me, I'm a romance reader. I, I like to be carried away in, in fairy <laughs> tales, but I found that you can only skip so many pages. Mm -hmm. after, mm -hmm. after a point, you're like, oops. Yeah. And yeah. so the Lord just spoke to me and told me that he would bless me mm -hmm. if I wouldn't read any more romance books unless they're Christian romance. Mm -hmm. And I have a lot of people that write me emails. They love it. They, you know, they, they love the inspirational feel at the end of the story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's really then a uh, demand, a market for that. Yes. People wanting, uh, I imagine probably more, more ladies than, than men in the Christian romance uh, section there. Uh, but um, uh, when it comes to s speaking truth and, and considering it as, as a ministry, uh, how have you seen fiction kind of touch people's lives and hearts and kind of not just have uh, something to read, but something to read with a real strong message behind it. I have to say that when I started this journey, I had no idea what I was doing. Mm -hmm. I was just telling a story. And when I got my first email from a lady that said, you wrote my story, I felt the same way. I mean, she just <laughs> sent a list and it kind of took me back because I'm not a minister per se. Mm -hmm. And I just responded, I said, God died on the cross for you, for mm -hmm. me, and I'll be praying for you. And she immediately emailed me back and says, oh, you're a real person, I thought it was a robot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, uh, if I had a secretary, it would be my daughter, and then I would probably have to fire her if she didn't do anything. <laughs> but I have gotten emails, people, and it's not about me. Mm -hmm. God set me straight mm -hmm. real quickly. It's never been about me. Never. It's about him. And it's for people that may not read their Bibles. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. find that people that read other genres, erotica, historical, they say, oh, Pat Simmons has a new book out. Let me grab my Bible. Mm -hmm. I know she's going to share a scripture that I've been looking for. Mm -hmm. And so the more I do it, I really see it's not about me. Mm -hmm. and, and the Lord let me know that. It's oh, about him. Well, Pat, I love this introduction of the main character. You know, I don't know how Stefan will feel about robust, but I just was intrigued by it. You say that uh, TV reporter Shay Carmen hasn't lost her faith in God, only in men, even those who call themselves Christians. Heartbroken and humiliated after learning her church-going boyfriend is married. Mm. <laughs> and so I'm saying to myself, oh, that could that could happen. I've seen that happen yes, in churches yes, before. So mm -hmm. there is some truth right. even in the fiction. Truth is stranger than fiction. Um, <laughs> the, I mean, seriously, I can't make this stuff up. Um, the, the, the actual plot came from a TV interview. I won't say who the sports figure was. Mm -hmm. He was a victim of an attempted carjacking and he was set free because of who he was. Mm. Seriously. Mm -hmm. I said, hmm, 
hmm, I can use that. And so the things that I have in the book, because I worked in television for 10 years, right. I didn't have to make that up. Yeah. So yes. the stories were actual stories that came off you know, our scanners. And then um, as well as Ron Maxwell's situations, those came basically off a news story. So um, I just fictionalize things that are real. Yeah. But, but I want to be real. I mean, mm -hmm. there are situations in the church and I just want to be real where people will say that happened to me, but if God did it for my character, mm -hmm. I believe God can do it for me too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, based on the introduction, uh, you know, <laughs> all men are dogs would have worked, but no easy catch <laughs> is probably a little bit nicer. So appreciate that. Uh, Pat, the, the, uh, the character based anything on, on obviously, as a, as a reporter, your experience mm -hmm. two decades in, in that same field, mm -hmm. uh, being able to translate uh, all that over. Did that make it a little bit easier for you to kind of create the character or, uh, or a little bit more difficult? It was easy in a sense, but I had to remember, don't go overboard. Mm -hmm. Don't go too high tech, you know, uh, as far as television uh, terms, because people may not know what a vote is or, mm -hmm. you know, or things like that, or what an assignment editor is really not an editor, is really a dispatcher to the news uh, crews and stuff. Baseball was a little tough right. because I go to the games for the popcorn and the hot dogs. <laughs> Where'd you get help on, on that end of it? Um, well, I, I tried to get it from my husband mm -hmm. and he put it off to my son mm -hmm. who loves baseball. Uh, when, when he was younger and we would be upstairs watching TV, he would be downstairs. We knew something happened because we would hear his I'm foot sorry. go, boom. Do, 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 do. Dad, did you see so and so, 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 so? And so um, I asked my, my son, and I would text him, and he says, Mama, just call me. Mm -hmm. And then I would go to Facebook because I had a problem like, okay, is a triple-A team better than a double-A? And so one of my author friends says, just think about the Charlie Brown, you know, mm -hmm. baseball team, and that really helps. So I tried to make sure that, you know, with my news background and my, mm -hmm. my information right. was right. correct. You can research well, that, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I noticed you address a really tough issue that we see playing out in the news today, and that yeah. is steroid use. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you did some research on that. How prevalent is that? I was really following? surprised after the commissioner had put all these rules for all these fines that it kept going. Mm -hmm. That did not stop the players. I was also surprised that this went as far back as Babe Ruth mm -hmm. and people injecting okay. themselves with these animal parts. Mm -hmm. I'll keep it clean. Mm -hmm. Animal parts. And I, and I was like, really? Is it really that prevalent that it's necessary for you to win? And so that was my news issue. You know, the spiritual issue was just because God saves us doesn't mean that we don't have to reap what we sow. Mm -hmm. But God will give us grace mm -hmm. to reap that. Now, that, is that the main spiritual message? Without, we don't want to give too much away, but okay. is that the main spiritual message? Are there other spiritual messages along the way with no easy catch? That's the main one. Mm -hmm. Because... Some people feel that's that, a good lesson that we need to yeah, learn and know. Yeah. yeah. When once people get saved, they think they're scotch free. I'm I'm saved. I'm redeemed. God has forgiven me. I'm squeaky clean. Yes. Mm -hmm. Spiritually, but as long as we're physically, we still have to reap what we sow. Mm -hmm. You have murderers that mm -hmm. repent. God forgives them, but they still have to pay the penalty here. Right. But God will give, give us grace, grace yes. to go through the penalty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Pat, d are you getting responses from people who are saying, you know, I actually came to faith in Christ at the, you know, yes. reading? Yes, I, I've gotten so many strange emails. I've gotten emails from people that said, oh, I went there or I actually ordered the sandwich that he got. And I'm like, really? Are they serious? And when I started getting those emails, I started to understand the impact of my words. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people say that they have gotten ins inspiration and they have began to read their Bibles more. Mm. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the uh, Major League uh, ticket catch that's kind of connected to. I, I have to give a shout out to Whitaker House uh -huh. because when they found out that my character was baseball, they so graciously sponsored a contest where anyone can win two Major League Baseball tickets, your choice, mm. your game, except the playoffs of the World Series. Mm -hmm. I think they're valued at $200, so these are not nosebleed seats. Right. 
And that's in order to celebrate my 10th novel. So yeah. I have to give a shout out to them because they came out of their pocket for that. People can go to my website and there's a link to my website or they can just go to noeasycatch.whitakerhouse.com. And enter and, that. And just, you know, sign up. It's no purchase necessary. Yeah. You get, there's a little video. You can, you know, me talking, you know. <laughs> you don't have to watch the video. But I just register to win. Awesome. And I'm just hoping thousands and thousands of people will do that. And maybe, yeah, you and your significant other can go and take in a ball game mm -hmm. and uh, read No Easy Catch. Real quickly, we've just got a, a few moments left here. Uh, what is it that you really hope folks walk away from, uh, from the book after reading it? I want them to believe that regardless of whatever situation that they face, especially in the church, because there's decoys, there's mm -hmm. decoys in the church. Mm -hmm. I don't want women especially to give up that God has someone for them. I mean, as far as the prophets, God said, I have reserved 7,000 prophets that will not bow down to Baal. Well, I believe God has reserved a portion of those good Christian men. I mean, mm -hmm. if a good man is hard to find, then a great woman is no easy catch. So mm -hmm. there's all <laughs> different kind of things going through. In awesome. The book. Wonderful. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. <laughs> Pat thank Simmons. You. To connect with Pat, you can go to patsimmons.net or go to harvest-tv.com. It's our website for an easy link to get back to No Easy Catch. Pastor Mark Lance is continuing this week with The Power of the Resurrection in part four of that series. Good morning. It's a beautiful day to be with you here on The Harvest Show. And what a joy to look into the Word of God together and talk about the fact that Jesus Christ is alive. All this week we're talking about the resurrection of Jesus as we come to Easter Sunday just a few days from now. Yesterday we talked about resurrection requires a death. And the death of hopes and dreams that we have need to die in order for the plan of God to become alive. And Romans 6 is where we're taking our thoughts, and we're going to go to the fourth verse today, where Paul the Apostle wrote these words. He said, therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. You know, it's not enough to put to death the issues of your life. It's time to bury them. It's time to be done with those things. It's time to be done with that addiction, done with that fear, done with that sin, and bury it once and for all. The disciples they didn't leave Jesus hanging on the cross. What do you do with a dead body? Of course, you, you bury that dead body. You don't carry it around with you, lest the stench and the decay of the dead begin to affect the living. It's time to bury that which has died in your life. Because when you bury it, you subject it to the potential power of the resurrection. When you bury that issue, when you bury maybe even that relationship, that means you've taken your hands off of it. The only way for it to ever have new life again is there for uh, God to come and have divine intervention. You see, to be buried means to be immersed. That's why many, when we, we baptize in water, we cover them in the water. We immerse them in the water. And that's why baptism is used as an analogy of burial. We are immersed under the water. We're immersed under the ground. You see, about the resurrection of Jesus, God planned the exact place of his burial. He said in Isaiah 53 and verse 4 that they made his grave with the wicked, with the rich in his death. He died between two thieves. That's the wicked. He was buried in the tomb of a rich man, Joseph of Arimathea. That's the rich. It's the will of God now for you to take and have a place for you to connect with God and take that dead issue of your life off of the cross and bury it. Let it be done. Stop letting it stress you. Stop letting it fill you with anxiety. Stop letting it dominates you or dictates you or define you. You're not defined by who you used to be because when you bury it, you're telling God you're letting it go as if it's never to come back into your life again. And if God chooses to bring that relationship back, it will only be him that does it. You have nothing to do with it. You know, I'm tired of trying to make something work with human effort because once it's in the ground, there is no human effort that's ever going to be able to resurrect it. It's going to be the power of God that brings it back to life. Not only did God plan the place of his burial, but he also planned the exact time of his burial. 
Jesus prophesied in the 12th chapter of Matthew, as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. That number three is so significant. When you see the number three, you've got a, a whole new set of phenomena that comes. Uh, you come to the number three, this is the first geometrical figure. You can't make a solid figure with two lines. It takes three lines to be able to enclose a figure. It takes three lines to be able to complete it. That's why the number three actually means complete. It forms a plain figure. Three lines are needed to form that figure. Three dimensions, length, breadth, and height are necessary to form a solid. Therefore, three stands for that which is real, that which is complete, that which is substantial and entire. All things are complete, are stamped with that number three. God himself has three attributes, omniscience, omnipresence, omnipotence. Three in the Bible is divine fullness and completion as in the Godhead. You have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Three is the minimum number to establish a pattern. Something can happen once by chance, twice by coincidence, but three consecutive time indicates a pattern. Samuel heard his name called three times before God finally confirmed through Eli that it was him. Man has a trifold spirit, body, soul, spirit, trifold being, body, soul, spirit, three. Three divisions of time, past, present, future. Three speaks of totality, sufficiency, and the complete work of God. Friend, when you bury something, did you know that God knows the exact time? He knows the exact time, and three means complete. Complete. When you bury something, that is a completion of that season of your life. It's done. It's now time to move forward. It's sufficient. You're now moving into a new season. And I really feel as I'm speaking to you this morning that God is saying, let it be buried. Let it be done. Let it be complete. Be able now to move forward. Let it go and allow the Spirit of God to resurrect something brand new in your life. Friend, I believe the Holy Spirit is telling you today, there's a new season ahead. It's a resurrected season. And when God does it, no man will stand in the way. May God bless you today as we experience the power of the resurrection of Jesus. Lester Summerall dreamed of bringing the message of God's love and mercy to every nation of the world. Daily, Lissy Broadcasting is fulfilling his vision to reach a million souls for Jesus Christ. Every day, we step out by faith to pay the cost, to obey the great commission of Jesus Christ, to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. But we can't do it without you our partners. Will you consider becoming a partner in faith with Lissy Broadcasting by stepping out in faith to give a $25 monthly gift to keep reaching the lost, last, and the least of the world? As a partner in faith, you'll be changing lives every day for Jesus Christ. Call us today at 1-800-365-3732 or go online to partnerinfaith.com. We have some amazing resources to give you when you join. And on behalf of all the lives you'll be changing, thank you. The Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. And may the Lord place his name upon you. May the Lord bless you indeed and enlarge your border. May his hand of might be with you. May the Lord keep you from danger, prosper you, and give you hope. May the peace of God guard your heart and your mind in Christ. By his stripes you are healed. We know that having a Bible changes people's lives. That's why Lacey Broadcasting created our Spread the Word ministry 14 years ago to provide anyone outside the U.S. who requests one a free Bible. Today, your gift of $180 sends an entire case of Bibles. Go to Lacey.com to make your donation. That's L-E-S-E-A.com and help us send 36 Bibles around the world. That's L-E-S-E-A.com. We certainly appreciate all of those of you who have helped send Bibles over the last month and we want to continue towards that goal of 14,000 Bibles and the Word of God certainly important to have in our hearts as well. That's one of the reasons why we have 
Pastor Charles here to help edify us. We just got a great message from Pastor Mark Lance, but we have a number of people who've called into the prayer line with with prayer requests. And as we go farther into Holy Week, is there a kind of a common theme of what comes in with prayer requests? Well, you know what? Um, what's what's seemingly taking place now in this day and time, Chuck, it seems like it's kind of like business as usual. Okay. It's like it's not a lot of requests call, uh, being called in pertaining to the holiday in itself, or or like I like to say, the holy day in itself. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's, it's like the normal requests are still being made. And what's the most common thing you hear from people? Well, of course, healing. Healing, mm -hmm. healing uh, by far is number one on the call list. Uh, there are so many hurting uh, people, and we're not just talking about uh, mentally or spiritually. We're talking physically. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of physical hurt, physical healings that need to take place in the body of Christ. So would uh, finances be number two? Or finances marriage? would be number two. Okay. Finances mm -hmm. would be number two, and, and a distant third uh, would be uh, relationships or marriages. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, certainly the Word of God helps us with all of those things. Absolutely. That's what you have for us today. I do, I do, and and, uh, and, and keeping my promise, we're, we're staying in uh, Matthew, and uh, we're staying in that 26th chapter, and, you know, we, we talk about, uh, in our normal everyday life, we talk about dinner and a movie. Okay. You know, how about dinner and a betrayal? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's kind of where we are today in Matthew. We're in Matthew 26. We're going to be re reading uh, from the New Living Translation, uh, starting with verse 14. Very good. Uh, then Judas Iscariot, one of the 12 disciples, went to the leading priests and asked, how much will you pay me to betray Jesus to you? And they gave him 30 pieces of silver. From that time on, Judas began looking for an opportunity to betray Jesus. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, the disciples came to, G to Jesus and asked, where do you want, want us to prepare Passover meal for you? As you go into the city, he told them, you will see a certain man. Tell him, the teacher says, my time has come and I will eat that Passover meal with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus told them and prepared Passover meal there. When it was evening, Jesus sat down at the table with the 12 disciples. While they were eating, he said, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. Greatly distressed, each one asked in turn, am I the one, Lord? He replied, one of you who has just eaten from this bowl with me will betray me. For the Son of Man must die, as the scriptures declared long ago. But how terrible it will be for the one who betrays him. It would be far better for the man if he had never been born. Judas, the one who would betray him, also asked, Rabbi, am I the one? And Jesus told him, you have said it. A lot to digest in that piece of scripture right there. You know, it starts off and, and perhaps there's some amazement in there. First of all, that uh, the price of 30 pieces of silver would mm. be enough for our Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. uh, then you go on, and, and the fact that uh, Jesus continues to, to prophesy. He says, go see a man in this town. They, they, they don't even know who the man is. Go see this man and tell him the teacher is ready, and he'll do exactly what you tell him to do, mm -hmm. and, and it happened that way. That's right. But then the, the incredible uh, betrayal here by Judas, and you know, one of the things that always strikes me as I hear the story, Pastor, is we know that Judas died. We know that he took his own life. But we really don't know what has happened. Did, did Judas ask God for mercy, you know, at the end? Did, what was Judas's mindset at the end after the betrayal of Jesus? Obviously, he was upset. He takes his own life. But what really happens there with somebody and certainly I'm sure in the prayer line you encounter that kind of mindset all mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. you know the, the thing about that Chuck in, in response to your question is, is is that we know that the the final the final move that Judas made was was suicide. Right. Um, I do believe I, I, I did read that he threw down the 30 pieces of silver, right. which in a, in, a, in a statement in itself is saying, I regret mm -hmm. what I did. 
And, and that's basically what repentance is. Now, to then circle back and commit suicide, you know, had he went back to the Lord, the main difference between Judas and Peter is the fact that Peter stuck around and repented. <laughs> he stayed in that repentant state, whereas Judas went back to the unrepentant state. So, you know, he, he committed another sin on top of the repentance, yep. which, which we do quite often. This is why there's such a juggling act with our lives is that we can't get caught in betwixt in between. <laughs> we got to stay in that repentant place. We got to stay in that place. This, this would seemingly be a betrayal that would take either one of us by surprise, but it didn't take Jesus by surprise. He knew in advance what was going to take place, and he knew who was going to do to do. Well, we only have about a minute left. Why don't we get to some of those prayer requests that you have? Today? Well, actually, today, Chuck, I, I wanted to read a couple of praise reports. Very good. If that's okay. Yeah. Um, because these are coming in as the requests have been made. I asked uh, for prayer. Uh, this is a partner in faith named Grace. She says, I ask for prayer for both my brother, Simon, and Ed. Ed had pancreatic cancer and Simon had colon cancer. They are both free. When the doctor did the surgery on Simon, he said it was a miracle because he felt his hands being guided. Mm, I, 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 like to, I like to just stop there, and I would like to pray for some of those ones. Let's do that. Father in heaven, we thank you right now for all those ones who are calling in the prayer line. We thank you, Father, for those ones who are viewing us now. We believe, Lord God, that even the ones who are watching us by TV, Lord God, will begin to receive your healing, Lord God. Be delivered, be set free yes, all, from all addictions, Lord God, and healed in their bodies in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord God, as always, we give you the honor, the praise, and the glory. Glory. Amen and amen. 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 Well, you know, we are often telling you here, you never know what will happen. Miracles can happen each and every day. The greatest miracle in our lives will happen this weekend. Mm -hmm. A man will die on a cross, and three days later, he will be resurrected and live forever. And that man is Jesus Christ. Yeah. And if you don't know Jesus Christ, if you don't know the story, my gosh, that's why we're here, to talk to you about it, to tell you about it, to hopefully through our lives and through the people that we have on this show, help you to get to know them just a little bit better. But we encourage you, pick up the phone, dial 1-800-365-3732. Don't be Judas, be part of Jesus this weekend and dial us up here on Harvest. The eyes of the world focus on Jerusalem, and the world press critiques its every move. Christian believers seek to come to the city to walk where Jesus walked. I'm Brian Bush, and I live in Jerusalem's old city, reporting three times a week on The Harvest Show. Think of me as your eyes and ears. Join me as we look at things in the Middle East from a Christian perspective on The Harvest Show on this Lassie Broadcasting Channel. The Harvest Show is produced by LaCie Broadcasting and is viewer supported by people just like you. Thank you for inviting us into your home today.